Hello and welcome to the first video tutorial of classical mechanics on statics. First of all I want to say that um, English is not my native language, so uh, please apologize any mistake that might occur uh, in the following. I've tried to record all my videos in uh, such a way that no previous knowledge is required, other than basics maths. Okay, so um, as we all know, statics is part of engineering mechanics, which in turn is a part of physics. Huh? As suggested by its name, there is no kind of velocity in statics. Huh? Um, this means that, that all static systems are in so-called mechanical equilibrium. Huh? They don't move in any way. Yeah? So uh, this is the first very important fact and we will use it a lot later on. A very important quantity is force. Uh, the unit of force is uh, called Newton and it is uh, usually depicted as a vector. Uh, it's a vector represented with a capital F. Uh, F stands for force. The definition of the force is mass times acceleration. Uh, and this can easily be proved by a glass of water standing on the table. Here it is. Yeah? So the glass of water has a mass, uh, some number in kilograms. The acceleration is the Earth's gravity yeah? uh, with the unit meter divided by square second. So according to the definition of the force, the unit Newton must be kilograms for the mass times meter divided by square second for the acceleration. And this is correct because Newton is exactly kilogram times meter divided by square second. In this case, uh, this is the force uh, with which the glass of water is pressing on the table, uh, the weight force. So, uh, for any future problems, if, if there is just a mass in kilograms given uh, and you need the weight force, you just have to multiply it with the Earth's gravity and yeah, you get the force. Uh, basically, we separate between internal and external forces, yeah? two different kinds of forces. External forces are forces which uh, have a specific direction uh, and the direction belong to physical laws which must always be valid. Uh. An example would be the weight force, yeah, the weight force of the glass of water. So physical laws tell us that the weight force must always point um, at the surface of the earth. It would be wrong to change the direction of the weight force vector so uh, that is pointing at heaven because this would mean that the mass would fly, which obviously is not possible. Huh? Uh, at, at least it's not possible without uh, any additional forces acting on the mass. Yeah? And uh, internal forces, on the other hand, are forces which we can't see at the first time, yeah? but we can think about them. If we go back to the glass of water, uh, we said that it has a weight force. Yeah? Okay, so um, if just the weight force would act on the glass and no other force. The glass would drop down on the floor. Huh? Now, the glass is not moving, it's just standing on the table. It's in mechanical equilibrium. But this means that there must be another force which keeps that glass in equilibrium. And this force is an internal force, yeah? because we, we can see it if we just look at the table and the glass. We just see it if we just theoretically separate the glass from the table. So we get two parts. Huh? the glass um, and, and the table. So let's have a look at this. Um, so um, if we have a look at the glass, there are two forces acting. Yeah? One of them is the weight force and we have an additional force, yeah? Ft let's say. And just with this force Ft the glass is not moving. Yeah? Without the force Ft the glass would drop down on the floor. And on the table, on the other hand, there's just the force Ft acting. But, and this is very important, the direction of the force Ft is pointing uh, at the opposite direction. Yeah? Um, because if we put the glass and the table together again, the two forces have to annul each other. Yeah? The force has to disappear. Because indeed, we just see the weight force. Yeah? So, for internal forces, it does not matter in which direction to draw the force on one part of the cut, but it has to be drawn in the opposite direction in the other part. This is the important thing. Uh, uh, these thoughts, by the way, are from Isaac Newton. Yeah? You might know the, the three famous uh, Newton laws, which, which basically build the fundamental of the uh, science of engineering mechanics. 
Um, as you will see in, in all my other video tutorials when we start calculating the important problems of statics, um, we usually use a coordinate system to describe our quantities. Huh? For this reason, a vector is always signed. This means that, uh, that the force F, for example, has a positive sign, a plus, if it shows in the same direction as a X axis, for example, and a minus when it's pointing against the direction of the X axis. Yeah? Another very important quantity that shows up in almost every problem is the moment or torque. Yeah? The definition of the torque is M is equal to R, the cross product of R and F. Yeah? So R is the posi position vector and F is the yeah, force vector, yeah? shown in a, a specific coordinate system. And uh, if you have a plane problem, I would rather suggest to use the short version, M is equal to F multiplied with L. Yeah? Uh, moment is equal to force multiplied with the distance at right angels. Yeah? And just being confronted uh, with solid problems, I would suggest to use the, the cross product formula. Yeah? But these are exactly the, the, the same formulas. So you get exactly the same result. Yeah? Sometimes it's just faster to, to use this one. Yeah? When using this one, the formula F times L, you have to really be careful about the right angel. So the distance from the force to the specific point at which you want to have the torque has to be at right angels to the line of action of the force. Yeah? The so-called uh, line of action is the line uh, which is equal to the direction of the force. Yeah? I have prepared a little example to make this easier to understand. Um, <clears throat> this is a kind of a lever which is uh, pivoted at the point S. Yeah? So in the first case, um, the, the, the torque, the moment concerning point S is F1 multiplied with A, just because it is at right angles to the force uh, F1. Yeah? The distance A is at right angles to the line of action of the force F1. This is the important thing. And um, in the second case, uh, we have two forces acting on the lever, F1 and F2. And in this case, the torque concerning point S again is uh, F, F1 multiplied with A. Because F2 does not have a moment concerning point S. Yeah? Because we're not able to find the distance between the line of action of the force F2 and point S that is at right angels to the line of action of, uh, of the force F2. Yeah? You can say uh, the distance is zero. And according to the definition, if the distance is zero, then the moment is zero. Yeah? You can imagine it like um, the force F2 is just pushing the whole lever to the left. Yeah? But it, it does not have a moment concerning S. Okay, so um, that was all so far. I hope that you liked this video. Uh, please have a look at, at all the other ones where lots of uh, typically problems are discussed extensively. And uh, please tell your, your friends and your colleagues. Huh? So see you next time. Uh, bye and regards.